is Aoi Sakamaki, the unpredictable brat with Riz but no type of brains to back it up, but has SS rank powers that can't be matched with any other. Asuka Kyudu, a rich bratty girl who isn't afraid to speak her useless mind, who's also good at manipulating people to do whatever she pleases. Kasuke Byu, a shy girl who wishes to see peace, or at least that's what she seems like on the outside, as she's one of the craziest Yandera in the group. One day when all three of them found themselves teleported to another world, they received knowledge on how to use their powerful gifted strength for the good or worse. However, it didn't take long for them to come up with a bad reputation. On a sunny day in Japan, a high schooler, Sakamaki Izeoi was annoyed by some losers bullying a classmate of theirs, threatening to throw him into the river just to feel better about themselves. Unfortunately for them, Sakamaki showed up bombarding them with a strong barrage of rocks that terrified the bullies into fleeing the scene. And they were right to be scared, as his barrage was so strong that it left a massive hole in the bank of the river. Just as he was about to leave, he received a letter that fell from the sky. In an old-fashioned Japanese mansion, a prestigious high school girl, Kyudo Asuka is surprised to find a letter that has her name on it in her bedroom. She summons the maid and asks her if some stalker has entered her room. The maid denies that, but Asuka uses her psychic power to make sure that she's not lying to her, which, much to her relief, turns out to be true, as Asuka is the only one who has keys to her room. Once the maid left the room Asuka grinned in excitement about the identity of whoever snuck the letter into her room. Simultaneously, another girl called Kasukebu got that same letter, but it was delivered to her by her kitty cat after it fell from the sky. The letter glows and takes the three to an alternative world, where they end up falling into a lake. The three introduce themselves and Asuka got offended by being called out as a guy. Sakamaki proceeds to introduce himself as being dangerous, crude, vicious and hedonistic. Of course, Asuka didn't like his guts. While they're at it, a bunny girl hidden in the bush was sneaking excited that three people with strong personalities came into her world. Much to her surprise, Sakamaki noticed her presence and considered asking her out about why were they not greeted after being summoned to this world. It wasn't just him, much to the bunny girl's shock that noticed her presence, because both Asuka and Kasukabe did notice her as well. Now that her presence is revealed she comes out and tries to fool around for a little, much to her horror however, Sakamaki jumps at her suddenly. The outlanders, namely Sakamaki, Asuka and Kasukabe, were surprised with the way she's dressed calling her out as a cosplayer. Frustrated by such a reaction, Black Rabbit got worked up for the answer, just to dodge an attack by Sakamaki, followed up by Kasukabe trying to catch her. Asuka, who's been watching this hunt going for a while, ordered the birds to stop Black Rabbit from moving around, which they did. They even threw her on the ground for the outlanders to decide what to do with her, so they grabbed her ears for the sake of curiosity. It should have been me, not him! Black Rabbit doesn't appreciate the lack of discipline that the three outlanders have toward her. It was only later that she proceeds to welcome them properly to the world of Little Garden, where they were invited to be given a chance to take part in the gift games, since they were not normal human beings in the first place as they possess a variety of blessings given to them by various war gods, demons, spirits, and stars. Black Rabbit also adds that the Little Garden has various stages created for the sole reason of competing with one another using those blessings making sure to tell them that to clear a stage, they must fulfill the conditions set by each stage's host first. She also warns them that the games range from being treacherous, difficult, and possibly life-threatening, but it won't be much of a problem for these outlanders, she says. Finally, she invites them to play a simple card game with her first. With a clap of a finger, she brings a poker table for the game. I was hoping she would bring me a father figure in my life, but we all have dreams. Anyways, Black Rabbit kept on provoking the Outlanders to work as a team by forming a community to be able to participate in this game, making it clear that if they're not ready to play they're free to turn down her offer. Deep down she was nervous that her speech might backfire and get them to beat her or grab her bunny ears. Thankfully, Sakamaki found her provocation to be rather interesting, so Black Rabbit proceeded to explain the rules of the game after a huge sigh of relief, telling them to pick one card out of 52, and whoever picks a face card wins, but it has to be done on the first try, they lose otherwise. Black Rabbit made it clear also that she's going to judge this game. Thankfully for the Outlanders, as they're newly arrived at the Little Garden, they can play without chips but they can still bet on their pride if they lose, but if they win, Black Rabbit adds she will do any one thing they ask of her. Sakamaki instantly shows his hedonistic side and it seems that the former has caught on to his intention. She freaks out and adds that she meant anything as long as it's not lewd, much to Asuka and Kasuke's annoyance. In the end, the Outlanders decide to play this game. Before they start, however, Black Rabbit pulls a contract called G's Roll, and the Outlanders agree to it and start checking the cards, apparently both Asuka and Kasuke were trying to mark the cards with some tricks of their own. 
Once they're done they finally start the game. Sakamaki starts first, by hitting the table so hard that he chaotically lifts the cards off the table, much to Black Rabbit's dismay. When she tried to protest against it Sakamaki made it clear that they picked face cards from the cards on the table, thus not breaking any of the rules. Disheartened, Black Rabbit confirms that their method was valid and that Asuka and Kasukabe had won fairly. As for Sakamaki who hasn't picked a card yet, he already managed to memorize the positioning of every card, therefore he picked the one card he wanted as he flipped the rest with one hit. In front of a huge gate, a young boy called Jaehin. No not the League of Legends number 4 freak, I mean Jin was sitting at the gate of it being called out by a cat girl called Riri to ask him if Black Rabbit is back yet, a question he affirms. Just as Riri and the boys around her pass through the gate, Black Rabbit arrives with the Outlanders introducing Jin to them. Just as she turns to do so however, Sakamaki already went to go get the milk. It is only then that Asuka mentions that he said that he's going to check the edge of the world real quick and took off, much to Black Rabbit's outrage, since both Asuka and Kasukabe didn't want to bother mentioning that to her in the first place. It's only then that Jin warns Black Rabbit about the edge of the world, however, she is determined to bring the problem boy, namely Sakamaki, back with her, transforming her hair from blue to pink. After he insulted her, who's known as the aristocrat of the little garden, she rushes after promising to make him regret insulting her and leaving everyone speechless with how fast and foolish she is. Jin proceeds to show Asuka and Kasukabe into the little garden. Once past it, the latter two are impressed with the city's view from the inside where, even though it's covered the sun still shines bright, as the city's cover was made for the races that cannot be exposed directly to sunlight such as vampires and all. The little garden hosts a variety of different races, gods, demons, spirits, vampires, humans, animal-human hybrids, and women. Both Asuka and Kasukabe go to a local restaurant with Jin in the lead as he keeps on telling them more about little garden, unknowingly though they're being shadowed by a large man. Just as Jin was guiding the girls like the tourist guide he is in Little Garden, Black Rabbit is still looking out for Sakamaki inside the dense jungles and forests, worried about his safety from other gods that use the woods as their domains for games. She suddenly hears explosions on the horizon with water splashing high. Just as she's getting closer to the waterfalls where this pandemonium took place, she sees Sakamaki standing tall, and he turns around and notices the hair color change she had then calms her down for reaching out to the edge of the world on his own and informs her that he did indeed challenge a god to a game. As he finishes his words, an angry water god erupts out of the waterfalls. Black Rabbit was so dismayed at the fact that Sakamaki managed to get a god to be this mad. As the water god raises tornadoes out of the lake, Sakamaki remains chillingly unflinching in front of the storm clearing it instantly with one punch, then jumps equally as fast inflicting the coup de grace on the god's head, finishing the game in a spectacular victory, impressing Black Rabbit with the idea that a human managed to defeat a god. Just as the battle on the edge of the world concluded, Asuka, Kasukabe and Jin ordered what they wanted to eat. Kasukabe was impressed by the fact that the waitress could understand her kittens meowing as well. Even cats can riz a cat girl waitress it seems hot. Asuka was impressed by Kasukabe's ability of being able to talk to different animals claiming it to be amazing. Just as Asuka was about to explain the difference between her ability and Kasukabe's, the guy who's been lurking in the shadows, whose name is Galdo Gasper just appeared out of nowhere, insulting Jin's community as the weakest in all of Eastern Little Garden and introduces himself to the Outlanders as the leader of the Forest Garrow community. On the edge of the world, Black Rabbit claims Sakamaki's reward is a large water tree sapling, solving their community's water shortage problem, which leads Sakamaki to ask her to reveal a deal-breaking secret that she's been hiding and leads her to call him and the other two girls to the world of Little Garden. Black Rabbit still insists that it's because Sakamaki and the others have gifts. Sakamaki however wasn't buying it, guessing that her community was either incredibly weak or that something happened that put her team in constant decline. Her reaction though was to be unspoken. Jin also was annoyed by the presence of Galdo at his table who was ignoring him just to talk to Asuka and Kasukabe, inviting them to his community. Black Rabbit explains the situation of her community to Sakamaki, calling it desperate. Her community was strong and mighty before, until one day they bit more than what they could chew in a challenge, and were wiped out overnight. Galdo calls out Jin as the leader of a pale shadow of an ancient glorious community, claiming that the demon lords were the ones to bring such a tragic fate to Jin's community, turning it into a nameless community, stripping it of its banner and members, where only Jin and herself, Black Rabbit adds remaining, as well as 120 people aged 10 or younger that goes daily to a far-off river to bring water in their wooden buckets so they can grow crops in the very small lands they live on. 
When Sakamaki asks why not take down the organization and start anew, he's met with an emotional reaction from Black Rabbit, who wants to protect the homes of their friends, hoping that one day to get their name and banner back from the demon lord that defeated them. Surprisingly enough for her, Sakamaki agrees to help them out to restore their glorious days by defeating the demon lord. She was happy that she couldn't grasp how romantic the idea sounded to him at first, promising her to expect wonders, much to her joy. It was around that time that Asuka also figured out that Galdo wants her and Kasukabe to join his community, named for as Galo instead of a pathetic powerless nameless community that can't benefit her in any way like Jin's, to which they firmly reject, making it clear that she's only there to make new friends. Consequently, Kasukabe and Asuka become friends and a lovey-dovey atmosphere fills the air, much to the annoyance of Galdo, probably reminded of himself being a sore loser despite his strong build. He was further infuriated when Asuka, in her usual dignified self used her blessing on him to force him to sit down and answer her questions about how his community managed to rack so much power despite him not being the demon lord, to which he admitted that they kidnapped lots of women and young folks from other communities to blackmail them into challenging them, forcing them into submission by holding their daughters and sons as hostages. Unknowingly for them, Galdo eliminated them all on the same day they were kidnapped, as he was annoyed by their crying, reminds me of an abusive father, except worse. Galdo however still proceeds to talk under the spell that Asuka cast on him, saying that if this information got out into the open, his community would disintegrate. Horrified by how evil he is, Asuka stops him from talking and releases him from her spell, just for Galdo to transform into a tiger and attack her. Unfortunately enough for him, Kasuke managed to pin him to the ground, as Asuka leaves him but two choices, to eliminate everyone at the scene right now, or to escape to somewhere beyond the reach of the law. She concludes by inviting him to a gifts game, where they would bet their community names and pride on the line. The stakes are high, but so are the rewards. Once they're back, Black Rabbit is shocked that her community is challenging Fora's Gallo. Just as she was reassuring herself that Sakamaki might be able to deal with this however, he disappoints her further by refusing to take part in the game, making it clear that it was only Asuka and Kasukabe that picked the fight. Once things are settled, the no-name community heads to ask Thousand Eyes to evaluate their gifts, since it's a huge commercial community. They have some fun discussions on the way until they shortly reach the Thousand Eyes Guild building, where a tiny cat girl named Shiryasha rushes outside in excitement for Black Rabbit. Just like her missing father came back from hunting the milk for years, she was so excited to meet her so much that they fell in a tiny waterway, where Black Rabbit was being hugged a bit intimately let's say until she threw her into Sakamaki who in turn kicked his belly, much to Shiroyasha's annoyance. Inside the community's building, Shiroyasha introduces herself formally as an executive of the Thousand Eyes community and her HQ is Gate 3345. As for what a gate briefly is, it's a ranking system for communities. The stronger you are the closer to the city center you get. Sakamaki discovers that Shiroyasha is stronger than the water god that he just defeated recently, so he stands up with Asuka and Kasukabe to challenge her to a game. Shiroyasha happily obliges, as she takes them to one of her playing fields, making it clear that she's a demon lord herself, much to the outlander's surprise. When she asks Sakamaki if he wants to go on a duel or a game, he chooses the latter, so Shiryasha brings up his opponent, Griffin. As always, Sakamaki checks on the victory conditions before Kasukabe comes in, agreeing to start the game. Kasukabe starts by introducing herself to the Griffin, to which he tells her that his pride cannot allow him to keep her on his back for long, so he asks for what she is willing to wager in exchange for his pride. You answer without hesitation that she'll wager her life, much to everyone else's shock. Asuka in Black Rabbit tries to interfere to deter Kasukabe from her decision but Shiryasha stops them from that. Kasukabe looks at them confidently assuring them that everything will be fine, so Griffin decides to test her courage first by putting it to the test as she's riding his back. On Shiryasha's signal, Griffin takes off and starts riding the winds, impressing you with his performance, even though things were looking a little rough. As temperatures and air pressure were decreasing the higher they flew, However, she kept herself together by remembering her father's advice on what to do if she ever encountered a griffin. Amidst that, Griffin takes her off guard with some maneuvers he performs, almost having her detached from his back. However, the girl remains tenacious and held firm onto the griffin, so he flies further higher off the ground and does sharp maneuvers in an attempt to force her to let go but to no avail, holding firm in a necklace that her father gave her that helped her get the ability to walk again. The more she insisted on winning and befriending him, the harder his challenge became for her. By the time they got through the finishing line, Kasukabe falls unconscious off his back. 
Just as Asuka was about to advance to catch her, Sakamaki stops her as Kasukabe's necklace starts to glow, waking her up and making her walk down to the ground safely, much to everyone's relief. Griffin also approaches her to congratulate her for defeating him. Shiroyasha asks if she was ever born with that gift, to which she denies it, claiming it to come with a wood carving that her dad gave her. As she approaches to see it, Black Rabbit asks Shiroyasha if she can evaluate it. But because she can't do that, as it's not her specialty she offers the Outlanders gift cards where they can store their gifts inside. Sakamaki concludes that his ability must be a bit special, as the card claims it to be unknown. As interesting as all that may have seemed to Shiroyasha, she was also concerned about how long are they going to keep on the Demon Lord's tail. By then, the no-name community had arrived at the ruins of their former territories. The destruction that the lands have seen was immeasurable, so much so that even the soil died. Sakamaki himself thought that it must have been 200 years ago that the city was razed to the ground. Despite Black Rabbit informing him that it's been only three years, but it's no surprise given the strength of the Demon Lord, piquing Sakamaki's interest all the more. In a classic mansion, a small vampire girl finishes giving Galdo some of the Demon Lord's gifts. At the remains of the walls that used to protect the now called no-name community, Black Rabbit and the boys plant the water tree sapling in the city. Much to their joy, water erupts from the waterway passages, as if it was a sight they haven't seen in years by now. On that very night, Black Rabbit takes a shower to relax from how rough this day was, as in the pool, Asuka and Kasuke were also enjoying themselves as they had fun with Black Rabbit. Asuka expressed her gratitude for the young lads who did their best in cleaning the bath for them. In the back of her head though she couldn't help but be concerned about how serious the gifts game can be. It was then that Kasuke brings the wisest line that a gamer can tell you. We're not getting off until we get a win. Sadly, Black Rabbit cuts this show of wisdom short by wanting to have some girly talk since they're sitting inside the bath. Later that night, outside the community's mansion, a shadowy figure wearing a cloak runs outside the mansion, gathering with fellow friends of his, unsure if they're truly going to carry out the mission they were given. But before anyone could even say a word, Sakamaki cuts through their conversation as if he was expecting them to be here, stoning them before they can even have the time to react. That shook the ground where the mansion is a lot, so much so that Lil Jin woke up in confusion. Just as he arrived at the scene, Sakamaki explained that it was Fora's Gallo that have sent some sketchy people to kidnap more people from Jin's community. The sketchy fellows were sitting back in awe after witnessing Sakamaki's strength, thinking that he may be the one to avenge them too from the Demon Lord. For once, it seemed that Sakamaki's guess was wrong because the sketchy guys came and begging him to crush Fora's Gallo, a request that Sakamaki firmly declined. When they tried to appeal to him by telling him about the hostages, they were met with the shocking answer that they were all eliminated. Amidst their grief, he makes it clear that they also share the same goal as Jin, who is going to avenge everyone, introducing Jin Russell as the kid who can beat all of the demon lords in this world. Inside the girl's bedroom, Black Rabbit tries giving something casual for her new friends to wear. They seem to find them a little too odd after hearing that Shiroyasha forced Black Rabbit to wear these. That was their impression for a second. Because a moment later they tried out some of the clothes and they liked them as they were comfortable to wear around. Until the dress slid over Asuka's shoulder for a moment. More importantly, Jin protested to Sakamaki about his earlier claims, worried at the prospect of having other demon lords coming after them if people spread those words again since he was still held back by the trauma of having his guild stripped of its banners and lands three years ago for losing against a demon lord in the first place. Sakamaki remained cool about the issue though as he expressed his disappointment in Jin, making it clear that defeating the demon lord is the most important objective on their agenda, and that he needs to shoulder the burden of his predecessors and go beyond them. He also reminds Jin that he's not just any guild leader, but the leader of that nameless community that will defeat the demon lord and restore his guild's honor. With that simple speech, Jin's confidence is restored and he's now in good spirits for tomorrow's game. Especially that among the prizes there will be an old member of the community that is held by the Thousand Eyes community as some sort of a slave, solidifying his resolve to join tomorrow's game. In the middle of their discussion, they end up interrupted by the girls. Sakamaki concludes by whispering in Jin's ear that he will get that old friend of his back if Jin wins tomorrow's game, adding that he'll also leave the community if he leaves. At the HQ of the Fora's Gallo community, Galdo ends up murdering one of his subordinates, just as the vampire girl from yesterday surrounds the building with thick woods. When the nameless community arrived, they were stunned by the sight they witnessed of the twisted nature of the terrain where the game would take place. Suddenly, a tree branch gets a hold of Kasukabe's cat, Calico. As Jin searches for the source of this magic, he discovers the G's role inside a haunted tree, where they learn that the victory condition is defeating Galdo using designated
designated weapons. To make matters worse, they're not allowed to use their gifts, making their situation even more precarious. Nevertheless, the Outlanders take the initiative in searching for the designated weapons. After a while of searching, at first, they almost end up giving up, until Kasukabe tells them that she found their location. Further ahead lies the Forest Gallo Mansion, so they head there and enter it, curious about the aims of Galdo without letting their guard down. Once they arrive in front of a certain room, however, the door opens violently and a large monster tiger appears in it. He roars so loudly so much so that Black Rabbit and Sakamaki hear it from far away. Black Rabbit, being a judge in this game, decides to not intervene, so Sakamaki calls her out as a coward, much to her annoyance. Back to the mansion, Jin spots one of the designated weapons, just for Galdo to attack instantly. Asuka tries to halt him but to no avail, so Kasukabe intercepts his attack, buying enough time for both Asuka and Jin to escape, leaving Kasukabe alone to deal with him. Once they're far away from the mansion, Asuka wakes Jin from the spell she cast upon him earlier. Eventually, he tells her the story of Gald and the vampire that turned him into a monster. Amidst their conversation, Kasukabe arrives while being severely wounded from the fight. Even though she is close to finishing him up, she still loses the duel. Thankfully enough for her, she made it out alive, but unconscious. Frustrated, Asuka leaves her friend with Jin as she goes to take down Galdo on her own. All that is happening while the vampire is watching them in silence from above, curious if they're up to something. On her way to fight Galdo, Asuka remembers some comments that Black Rabbit made about her ability as an unpolished gem, a diamond in the rough so to speak, advising her to sublimate her ability into miracles. For now, though, she stops near a torch in front of the mansion. It was only later that Galdo, who was asleep at that moment woke up to the burning smell of the mansion. He then jumped at Asuka who set herself in a fighting stance, inflicting a scratch on her dress. She then lures him out in front of a temple where she finally gives battle. As he approached her to attack, Asuka used her gift to order the trees to root him where he was. As he broke from the roots, he charged at her, and so she did after transferring her blessings into the sword, stroking him down with one deep thrust between the eyes, ending him once and for all, marking the end of the game. At first light, the roots disappear from the area. Everyone rushes to Asuka to check on her, taking her out to be treated properly at the community's workshop. Sakamaki acknowledges Jin as the victor in this game, despite the latter admitting that he did not succeed in distracting the enemy for enough time. Nevertheless, Sakamaki declares Jin's victory for the other communities that came to witness the burning of Galdo's ashes, ensuring that he will return them their names and emblems, much to the public's joy. It was right after that Sakamaki joined in the ceremony, asking everyone to remember Jin Russell and his community as the ones that will defeat the demon lords in Little Garden World, and they hail him for that. In front of the Thousand Eyes community building, a thin tall guy appears in front of a young lady cleaning, asking her about the whereabouts of Shiroi Asha. In the nameless community workshop, Kasukabe is still being hospitalized after the injuries she received from the previous game. Understandably, her friends were worried about her. Thankfully for them, namely Sakamaki in this case, but she was seized to become a gift game prize. Confident in Sakamaki's strength, Black Rabbit gets back to her optimistic mood again as she's reassured by his presence. Just when he asks about her reasoning for not being able to help, she answers that a bunny specimen is only allowed to judge, and to join the game as a participant must fulfill a certain number of conditions. By the time she left, Sakamaki finally got to talk to the vampire girl who was creeping into the mansion. Impressed with his ability to sense her presence, she refused refuses to answer any of his questions and attacks him immediately as she's running out of time. The fight caused so much noise that alarmed Black Rabbit and the others to rush to the scene. They find out that the vampire girl that Sakamaki is fighting is none other than Letitia herself. After getting her to sit and drink some tea, Black Rabbit tries to flatter her by calling her the Knight of Little Garden but to no avail, as she claims to be a mere property right now, apologizing for not being able to show herself to them again. Only then did Asuka ask her about what made her assist Galdo, Letitia's answer was, in her own words wanted to test their strength to see if she could entrust her former community to them, apologizing yet again for causing Kasukabe to be harmed, but also commending their gifts. She adds that she only came to this floor to advise Black Rabbit to disband the community as she didn't want to cause any more harm to Jin. But thanks to the Outlanders spreading out the news of Jin defeating Galdo, there's no back behavior. The douchebag reminds her that he was the one that brought her up here, ensuring that he keeps track of his belongings. Yup, that's slavery alright. Shiroyasha concludes that he's threatening that he's going to attack the nameless community. However, all he was doing was to cover it as giving them a proper punishment and that it'll slide under the radar since nobody will ever care if a nameless community got wiped out from the map. Just as I thought that I'm starting to hate this guy's guts, he throws his glass at Shiroyasha as she was about to take her leave from the room, upsetting her and threatening that he can wreck this place before she can even get to attack him. 
and whoever fails in catching it loses. She throws her spear with all her might, but Sakamaki throws it back with even more power, so much so that Letitia- Only then that Black Rabbit learned that Letitia's power and divinity were all gone. Suddenly a crimson laser hits the ground and moves towards them. Black around that same time that the community of Perseus arrived at the scene taking Letitia's statue with them. It became clear by now that the douchebag from the community of Perseus was the one behind the scene who, in return would sell her in an arena outside of Little Garden. As they speak though, they end up triggering Black Rabbit by how much they look down on her nameless community, so she summons her signature weapon Vajra. Sakamaki holds her ears making her miss them completely, reminding her them. Sakamaki asks Jin to keep an eye on Kasuke as the rest are heading to Thousand Eyes HQ. At the forementioned location, the douchebag expressed how impressed he is by the presence of a bunny girl inside the mansion. Sakamaki adds, That's right, those legs are mine. Shiryasha who's already down bad for black. When Sakamaki says that they are indeed provoking her, she hits his head, leaving the douchebag laughing at how comical characters they all are. Once the negotiations over Letitia start, the douchebag outright refuses. He apologizes for what Perseus have done but he still refuses to give Letitia up to them, when asked for evidence for that. Black Rabbit answers that Letitia will tell him everything once she's restored from petrification, which he still refuses once again, reminding me of Ricegum. He adds that what she'll say is going to be irrelevant since she'll choose to side with her old friends. He then adds that it might have been the nameless community that tried to steal her, but once encountered that he has no proof. He concludes that the deal is settled since neither of them has good evidence against the other, so he'll proceed with selling Letitia. To add insult to injury, he pictures them how humiliated Letitia will be once she's sold as a helpless little toy, in exchange for turning Black Rabbit into his slave for life. Bell on him to force him to apologize to Black Rabbit. However, he breaks off of it by trying to retaliate using a sword, only for Sakamaki to stop him with the tip of his finger. The problem stopped though thanks to Shiroyasha's to consider, which he agrees to give them a week. Once he's out of the room, Shiroyasha talks to them about how the Perseus community used to be chivalrous, hosting legendary and dignified gift games. Kasuke enters the room with some cookies that were made by the young folks of the community, easing the tense atmosphere that was in. Once seated, Kasuke asks if there's any possible way to save Letitia without giving up on Black Rabbit's freedom. The latter replies that there's a way, by participating in one of the games held by the Perseus community for the lowest levels that pertain to the legend. For them to get Letitia back, they must win two preliminary gift games first. Suddenly, the man, the myth, the legend himself breaks the room's door and info shows him what's in the bag. It turned out to be the gifts that gave them the right to participate in the legendary gifts game, which left them with no option but to accept the challenge. Reading the G's role, the nameless community learns that they have to defeat Laius, the jerk, but if they were to be seen they will lose the right to the challenge. The odds are not in their favor at all, for there are lots of invisible guards inside. To make matters worse, Laius's gift itself is their greatest threat since it's coming from his ex-demon lord slave. Black Rabbit was impressed by how quickly Sakamaki realized that, praising him for being a smart fella. By storming through the main gate, they declare the beginning of the game. The guards rushed into their positions as soon as the game started. Laius, on his luxurious throne was chilling about the situation confident that he'll emerge victorious out of this game. Once the first detachment reached their position, they were hit by a huge tidal wave from Asuka, they held firm to it and informed that she had lost the right to fight Leia since she was seen. Nevertheless, after remembering her role in this plan as a decoy to intentionally lose as the others are proceeding with their parts, Asuka unleashes another tidal wave against the guards. It was around the same time that Kasukabe started to detect any enemy presence nearby, kicking one of the guards out of consciousness once detected. The boys and she realize that the helmets that the guards are wearing provide them with invisibility, so they set a goal to get another one of those helmets to proceed to Laius's whereabouts, leaving this task to Kasukabe. Just as Sakamaki wore the helmet and went invisible, the guards noticed Kasukabe, just to be struck unconscious by Sakamaki. Unfortunately for him however, an invisible guard managed to slide under Kasukabe's detection ability and knock her out. A while later she regained her consciousness and proceeded to detect the newly arrived threat through echolocation. Once detected, Sakamaki punched the guard out of consciousness, defeating his gift head-on. In the arena, Black Rabbit awaits there for the battle to start nervously, just for her to be tickled by both Lil Jin and Sakamaki. While Black Rabbit got busy with the comical show of hers with the boys, they were interrupted by Laius, complaining that his guards failed miserably in stopping a bunch of no-names. He flies high and informs them that it won't be him that they will fight. Instead, Sakamaki realizes that they'll fight another ex-demon lord called Algol. Laius summons the demon lord. 
Her appearance and powers were equally wicked that the castle guards and the rest of the nameless community members felt uneasy by her screams. Algol then unleashed an energy ball that petrified everyone, except for Laius, Sakamaki, Jin, and Black Rabbit. From the Thousand Eyes workshop, Shiri Asha was watching the duel, doubting that Laius would win. Algol proceeds to free herself from her ropes and starts using them to wreak havoc in the arena, nearly destroying Letitia's statue and eliminating Black Rabbit. Sakamaki however remained undeterred by this show of force, ensuring to Jin that he was going to win this. It was then that Algol attacked Sakamaki directly. But just as Laius thought that she had struck him down, he realized that Sakamaki caught Algol's ropes. Frustrated, Laius orders her to press the attack against him, so she unleashes more ropes at him, transforming them into snakes that try to squeeze. Much to Laius's shock, however, Sakamaki breaks free from the ropes and snakes. Algol charges at him, using every bit of strength in her to put him down only for Sakamaki to raise her off the ground and knock her on it with ease. Laius was left so humiliated that he charged with his sword against Sakamaki to strike him down. But even that proved to be futile, because not only did Sakamaki dodge his attacks, but he also knocked him down. In desperation, Laius orders Algol to petrify the entire world, starting with Sakamaki, much to everyone's horror. And yet it would all be for naught, because Sakamaki destroyed the spell that Algol was shouting, knocking her permanently out of commission. After a short time of silence, Black Rabbit goes in to declare the victor, only for Sakamaki to interrupt her, saying that not only he's interested in getting back Letitia right now, but he wants Laius to taste a bit of what he harvested of his terrible actions, by putting his emblem and community name on the line to defeat Algol or Sakamaki. Of course, Laius was too infuriated to think straight at this point, so he stood up and rushed to punch Sakamaki. The outcome is obvious enough to be guessed at. The next morning, Letitia wakes up with the rest of the nameless community surrounding her, welcoming her back home. Of course, a needless squabble started over wanting her to be anyone's maid since she's the guild's property per se. At night, the young lads hold a big party welcoming Letitia back into the community. During it, they witness shooting stars lighting up the night sky. Black Rabbit informs them that after their loss, Pursues was exiled from the Thousand Eyes community as well as stripping them off their banner from the skies. It was only then that Sakamaki set a new objective for the community to set their banner high up in the stars. In the early morning, Asuka wakes up from a dream of hers over how boring her life in her original world was, to Kasukabe and Riri knocking on her door, giving her a letter carrying a specific seal. She rushes at Sakamaki who's been trying to catch some sleep in the library, trying to kick him, only for Sakamaki to block the kick with Lil Jin's head. She gives him the letter that she received as it was of utmost urgency, only for him to find out that it's an invitation to a gift game event hosted by the floor master. Naturally, Sakamaki got excited to take part in this event. They were disappointed in Black Rabbit for hiding this invitation from the Outlanders however, despite Jin saying that it'll take them a long time to reach out to the northeastern district of this floor. Black Rabbit was mad when she learned that the Outlanders sent her a letter informing her that they'll be heading to the Nativity of the Salamander to participate in that event, and to penalize her for hiding this from them, they will be leaving the community if she can't find them by tomorrow, getting her in a dilemma. In Little Garden City, the Outlanders and Jin take a rest to discuss their plan for this long trip. However, Jin warns them that even though there are astral gates to move around with them easily, they would still cost them a fortune. When asked about the distance between them and the northeastern district, Jin answers that it's about 998.000 kilometers, hoping to change their minds. Asuka however stands up angrily refusing to back down, especially after giving that letter to Black Rabbit. With the other two supporting her, Jin has no other choice but to relent to their demand. As for Black Rabbit, being the genius she is, she went to search for them with Letitia and the folks across the community building. Realizing that they took Jin and Riri with them and that they rushed outside with no money whatsoever to use the astral gates, Black Rabbit got some clues about where to start looking exactly, as well as the means to find them. So she leaves the house entrusting it to Letitia and the folks. At the Thousand Eyes Community Workshop, Sakamaki bluntly asks Shiri Asha to take him and his goons to this point in the northeastern district. To his surprise, she did invite them for that very reason, however, she requested them to help the newly appointed floor master Sandra in slaying any demon lord they encounter on the way. The gang agrees to this complicated mess and Shiroi Asha fulfills her part of the deal. Salamander District is a lively metropolis, with plenty of good sceneries, and understandably so the community was having fun there, until Furious Black Rabbit arrives to rumble. Sakamaki and Asuka ran away, Kasukabe though wasn't so lucky, since she was caught and thrown directly at Shiroi Asha. Black Rabbit then rushes to catch the other two folks, leaving Jin, Riri and the others in utter confusion. Once they make sure that Black Rabbit isn't around, Sakamaki and Asuka get the luxury of pretending to be British for once and walk around in a bourgeois manner. 
It was also around that time that Kasukabe spilled the bean to Shiroyasha, to which the latter concluded that threatening to leave the community was a little overzealous on their part. After putting this issue aside, she suggests they participate in a gift game of creation. After all, Kasukabe's father's ability wasn't just a normal gift, it was both an artistic and engineering marvel. Once she figured that she might be able to make it up with Black Rabbit, she decided to give the game a shot. As for the other two, they were enjoying themselves, agreeing to restore the Halloween event for the nameless community to lighten up the lad's hearts even more. Amidst this happy moment, however, Furious Black Rabbit arrives to rumble. Asuka gets caught by Letitia, while Black Rabbit goes on a hot pursuit after Sakamaki. The hunt was so intense, so much so that it caught the attention of common people in the lair, as well as the authorities of course. Eventually, Sakamaki ends up challenging Black Rabbit to a game, where he will do any one thing for her if only she can catch him outside how about debt. She agrees to the game if she can also do one thing to him if he manages to not be caught. By the time the game was about to start, Asuka was walking with Letitia and Riri eating crepes and having fun, only for them to find a lonely tiny spirit. The spirit felt uncomfortable around them so she ran away, and Asuka decided to go after her. Letitia followed her to have her avoid getting into trouble. As for the game for the other two, it's been going intense, attracting all the more people to witness it until he was caught in a precarious position where he might lose. Thinking fast, Sakamaki destroys the top of the building he's on, and the rocks falling at Black Rabbit rub her off her victory. By that time, a much bigger part of the tower fell off, threatening the lives of the city's citizens. So Sakamaki and Black Rabbit switch their attention to destroying it into smaller pieces, saving others' lives. As for their game, it ended in a draw, so now both get the reward. Just as Sakamaki started arguing about the results, authorities came in. Inside the city's arena, Kasukabe was having her own game, to which she came out as the victor, receiving lots of hails and cheers from the spectators. A bit later, Shiroyasha declares, as the host of the game introduces her honorary co-host to everyone there. That co-host is none other than the master of the north, Sandra Doltrake herself. Later, Black Rabbit, Sakamaki, Jin and Riri stood in front of Sandra, her regent Mandra, and, of course Shiroyasha as some kind of trial over the havoc they had caused. Shiroyasha interrupted the continuous threats of the regency, reminding them that Sandra was the one who would decide their fate. The latter decides to turn a blind eye to the pandemonium since no one was injured and Shiroyasha generously agrees to pay reparations. Even though everyone was relieved, Mandra was not. By the time Shiroyasha leaves with her bodyguards, Sandra leaves formalities behind and rushes to welcome Jin and Riri since they have all missed being together so much. Only then Mandra butts in and draws his sword to attack the folks. Thankfully for the young ones however, Sakamaki was there to block Mandra's attack, who had figured out the latter's disgust over the invitation of nobodies into their community's event. Understandably, Sandra stood up for her friends against her regent, who was her older brother. Mandra however still tries to gaslight her to step up her game and that interacting with those nobodies, in his own words is a disgrace to her prestige. He only relents and leaves them be thanks to Shiroyasha's support, but still can't resist thrusting in the topic of rumors that have spread from the eastern sector of the floor. Only then Shiroyasha brings the topic to the nameless community that one of their executives has foreseen signs of an invasion by a powerful demon lord in the nativity of the salamander, where they're located. She then proceeded to remind Sakamaki that his community had agreed to help without learning much about details in the first place. Sakamaki fainted in difference, asking for the signs, to which Shiroyasha answered that her source refused to mention who was going to be behind the attack however. So while the hot-headed Mandra got worked up assuming that the source was messing with them. Sakamaki however, assumes that the culprit is so strong that even his name cannot be uttered. Shiroyasha made it clear that nobody can say why for sure as of yet but other masters were hesitant about Sandra's nativity, putting the safety of much weaker communities in jeopardy since she's their sole defender on the floor. Shiroyasha concludes that there might be even some masters who will be willing to support the demon lord in his path of destruction. Only then did Sandra plead with Jin directly as his community's leader to help them defeat the demon lord. Without hesitation, Jin agrees. That evening in the city streets, Asuka managed to catch the lost soul and ensure her comfort. Buying a cookie for them to share, they even became friends. Awa, that's nice. They go into a tourist cave, looking at some artifacts. One of them was even submitted by a British community called Community of the Willow the Wisp. Sigh, I was excited to hear about another community named the Community of the Bao Aware. I can even see it in their emblem. 
After taking a good look at the artifacts there, Asuka got all the more determined that their community needed an emblem to become full-fledged hosts. She then proceeds on her tour only to stop at the sight of a giant robot made by a community called Rattenfanger. Asuka was impressed by that lost soul's community. In their excitement, a sudden air breeze turned off the lights in the cave. Amidst their confusion, a whisper echoed all over the tunnel, Asuka called out for whoever was there to step up, and a bunch of rats stormed towards her. Terrified, Asuka used her gift to stop them but to no avail, they even jumped at her to bite her. On top of the city, Letitia was flying, searching for Asuka. She was suddenly alarmed by what was going on and rushed there instantly. It was around that time that Asuka summoned a sword to parry the assault of the rodents as she was trying desperately to leave the tunnel, just to be saved at the last second by Letitia who escorted her to safety. That same night, Asuka took a hot spring bath, thinking about what made her ability breakable multiple times, only for her peaceful time to be disrupted by black Rabbit and Shiri Asha rushing into the bath. Black Rabbit, who has been worried over Asuka after getting hurt in the tunnel earlier felt relieved when she learned that Asuka is in good shape. As for Shiri Asha, well, she's just doing her own thing there. Let's keep it at that. It was only then that Asuka noticed Riri, Letitia and Kasuke being in there since they had entered the bath undetected during the commotion. Once they're out, they meet up with Sakamaki and Lil Jin, where Sakamaki, after seeing the girls, well, he was doing his own thing too. He's getting along with Shiroyasha it seems. After the commotion is over, Shiroyasha gets to the heart of the matter directly, where she gets Black Rabbit to judge in the game that Kasuke will be having tomorrow. As for the finalists, there's one from the Salamanders and two others. Asuka was shocked to know that one of them was from the British community Willow the Wisp and another from Rattenfanger. Sakamaki figured out who is going to be from the latter, naming Pied Piper of Hamelin. Shiroyasha started talking to them about this opponent as her tone became suddenly stern since that participant used to work as an underling of the Demon Lord, even leading a community called Grim Grimoire. However, they wondered about him regaining his power after his Demon Lord's death, so Jin comes in handy to explain. He tells them about the fairy tale of the Pied Piper, calling him out as a rat manipulator. Once Asuka connects the events she has been through with the story that Jin told them, she comes, in the back of her head to the horrifying conclusion that the lost soul she has might be the subordinate demon lord they're trying to fight. The next day, Black Rabbit announces the beginning of the new round of the gift game. Shiroyasha and Sakamaki, who's been watching from their prestigious chairs, were having an uh, intellectual conversation about arts. Let's keep it at that. While Asuka still couldn't stop thinking of last night's discussion, trying to comfort herself that everything would be fine. Before she enters the arena, Jin and Letitia give some more pieces of advice to Kasuke before she goes for her match, ensuring them that she'll be fine. She enters to the uproars and cheers of the spectacles, facing her opponent to Shagni's Fadus who came in with her community's greatest gift, the famous monster Jack-O-Lantern. With a clap of her tiny hands, Shiriyasha sends both participants into a different realm, where the game will be taking place. The victory condition is to exit the labyrinth there actually at first or destroy the opponent's gift. Kasuke flatters Asha by making her think she's the leader of her community to take the initiative and in rushing to the exit of the labyrinth. Asha however was determined to take down Kasuke. Frustrated by how fast her opponent is, she orders Jack to press his attacks further against her. It didn't take her a long time to figure out that Kasuke could detect the path to exit, so instead of dealing with her in person, she let Jack hinder her progress to a grueling pace. To make matters worse, he blocks her path by surrounding her with fire, concluding the game as Asha's victory. While Black Rabbit and Jin were comforting Kasukabe for losing the game, Sakamaki, Asuka and Shiroyasha and the Salamanders were looking at the sky in disbelief at what was there. The sky was raining Black G's rolls, reading that all communities present in the city are to participate in this game where the victory condition is, unconditional surrender or death of all players. As for the player's victory condition though, break the false lore and expose the true legend. It was only then that everyone realized in horror that the demon lord had arrived. Shiroyasha was sealed from the public since she's the game master. Unable to save her, and noticing the arrival of powerful enemies, Sakamaki asks Jin and Letitia to take care of Shiroyasha and the panic in the city while he deals with the incoming enemies. He rushes at them pinning down the guy named Wesser. Wesser had his trick up his sleeve, so he escaped Sakamaki's grasp and pinned him down the wall using magic, ordering his partner, Ratten, to move down and deal with the population there. When Wesser asks why Sakamaki didn't break from the spell to go after Ratten, however, he is shocked to know that Sakamaki figured out their story, coming from the legend of the Pied Piper of Hamelin, where 130 folks were sacrificed. 
He unlocks Sakamaki from the spell eventually to fight him head on after informing him that he's a typical demon and so they start their fight. Simultaneously, Letitia was having her battle against one of the demons, Black Pritcher and the Demon of Destruction, Sturm, she transformed and summons up her spear, hitting the girl demon but failing to penetrate Black Pritcher's armor, allowing the latter to counterattack by surrounding her with a black mist. A fire shot from Sandra saved Letitia from a bleak fate thankfully, taking over instead. In the arena, Black Rabbit tries her best to calm the people there, as Mandra is in charge of evacuating people from there, however, his subordinates fall under a spell that makes them attack people. If it wasn't for Asha's interference however things would have gone wrong. In her mystic cage, Shiri Asha asks Asuka, Kasukabe and Jin to tell Black Rabbit a few points. Firstly, the rules of the game have been intentionally made ambiguous, worst case scenario, there would be no way to ever win this game. Secondly, the possibility that this demon lord has become the ruler of another community. Before Shiri Asha can finish the third point, however, Ratten arrives at the scene trying to attack them with the guards under her spell, only for Kasukabe to intercept them. Impressed by how her gift failed in getting Kasukabe in particular under submission, Ratten approaches her to make her one of her pawns. Asuka however orders Jin, using her gift to take Kasukabe and leave Ratten for her to deal with. She managed to get Ratten also under her spell for a second as well, but the latter was much stronger so she managed to break free and repelled Asuka's sword attack, knocking her unconscious on the ground. Once she deals with them, she uses her flute to cast her gift over the city, taking control of everyone to go on a eliminating spree. To the sound of the flute, the carnage began. Unfortunately for Ratten however, Black Rabbit came in to save the day, ordering everyone as a judge to move to the negotiation tables. During negotiations, the room was full of a tense atmosphere. Jin was too nervous to even speak, just as I was nervous to confess to my crush, but thanks to Sakamaki he managed to find his salvation. And with that, the evaluation negotiations began. Black Rabbit starts by asking Black Pritcher a few questions. But before she can even finish her first one, Pritcher denies committing any violations, reminding Black Rabbit that she was the one to put the game on hold on account of a false accusation. The latter starts doing her transmission with Little Garden, just to notify everyone later that Pritcher was right and that the game should proceed. Thankfully, the villains decided not to add any more rules to the game and to resume it a month later from now. Jin interrupts them from leaving, however, confirming that Pritcher identifies as the Black Death, Pest, just as I wished I could identify as an attack helicopter. The latter confirms her identity, making it clear to everyone there that several participants have been infected already and that their lives are in her hands. Outraged, Sandra protested against it, but Jin couldn't help but tell her that they had no obligation to inform them of the disease, and that any protest would give them more opportunities to add more rules. Only then did Pritcher add a new rule. Good job Sandra for making a bad situation worse. The new rule stated that Shiroi Asha and all players in this room join the Grim Grimoire Hamelin community for the other communities to be spared. Shockingly, Black Rabbit realizes that Asuka isn't with them, so Pritcher promises to include her too. Sakamaki concludes that if they refuse they'll be wiped out. Jin and Sakamaki manage to also figure out if Grim Grimoire Hamelin is a newly founded community, for their desperate need for manpower. When Pritcher confirms that AIM, Jin makes it clear that the Black Death can eliminate whoever is infected in two days, and if they still want to resume the game a month from now, all the participants will be dead by then, including them, thus keeping their problem of chronic lack of manpower. Pritcher tries to get it down to 20 days so only they would still be alive. However, Mandra interferes, suggesting that his community will eliminate anyone who displays symptoms. After a bit of going back and forth, Jin had enough and set a time limit of his own. The game will resume in one week and will last for only 24 hours. If there's no winner by then, the game will end, ensuring the host's victory. Everyone was taken aback by the deal, but when Jin confirmed that he was confident he could defeat Pritcher after that week, she agreed to his deal, promising him an agonizing time. Inside the arena building, Riri and Kasukabe were tending to the guard's wounds. While they're at it, Asha arrives, informing Kasukabe that she couldn't find Asuka. Even though she's been disappointed, Kasukabe thanks Asha for her efforts, which she got all read out of shyness. Just as Jack was about to explain the situation at hand, however, Kasukabe grew weaker for unknown reasons. In an unknown place, the lost soul, Marin was trying to wake Asuka up who appeared to be a heavy sleeper. She can even sleep through the many alarms I have to wake me up for work in the morning. After what seemed like an eternity to me, the sleepy head finally woke up, finding her inside the tunnel she had visited yesterday in front of the Dean, hearing the pleas of other lost souls to take it and put an end to the false lore of Rattenfanger. Those lost souls were the 130 souls that were lost in Hamelin, 
promising to tell her the original lore if she manages to get Dean to submit to her in a gift game. Asuka gratefully accepts. A few days into the epidemic, more people started showing symptoms. As they witness the ordeal, Ratten and Wesser inform Perchur that her defeat by other communities is inescapable, since it's the role given to demon lords in Little Garden. Nevertheless, they ensured their unconditional support for her. Simultaneously, Kasuke wakes up from her coma, finding Sakamaki by her side to check on her. They discuss the progress they made in deciphering the lore and many theories related to it, such as the parallel world intersection theory where, in Black Rabbit's words it states that even if different things happen at different times, they will eventually coalesce into one result. In this case, the intersection was at the 130 deaths recorded on the plaque at Hamelin. The four possible causes were Wesser, Ratten, Sturm, or Pest. Whichever one does not result in death is the false lore. They conclude that it was Pest that only takes an extended period to cause death, but defeating her would clash with the other victory condition, which is defeating the game master. Now they were also given the task of publishing the lore, which Sakamaki concludes can be done by reorganizing the hundreds of stained glass of Hamelin but that would be too much of a pain to deal with. When asked about how Shiroyasha is bound by the villains, Sakamaki manages to connect the remaining piece of the lore, so he rushes outside after thanking Kasukabe for her help. The week is finally over now, and Perchur finally declares the resumption of the game. The participants in this game rush to destroy the stained glass pieces. Impressed by how they manage to figure it out, Perchur activates a spell that summoned the town of Hamelin, and with that, they couldn't find the stained glass anymore. Quickly, Jin orders everyone to look for churches, since the stained glass should be hidden in them. While looking from afar, Sakamaki got attacked by Wesser who was eager to settle their score. As for Perchur, she was occupied with blocking attacks from both Sandra and Black Rabbit, using her spells to retaliate against them. Once town folk start finding stained glass, Ratten interrupts them by summoning three Sturm demons. Taking the initiative, Letitia asks Jin to leave with everyone else and let her deal with Ratten. They could not go far, however, since their way was blocked by a Sturm. Just as they are about to be attacked, Asuka comes in after getting control of Dean. Sakamaki's fight with Wesser was intense, but even though Wesser managed somehow to knock his opponent down for a moment, Sakamaki revealed that he had an ace left up his sleeve. Because he solved the riddle, the more he demonstrated, the more impressed Wesser became. The latter couldn't hide his wish to have Sakamaki by their side, since he would do much more as a demon lord, and with that, the fighting resumed. Sakamaki kept on struggling against Wesser who got buffed with divinity. Just when Wesser started mocking his opponent for being a weakling, Sakamaki realized that Wesser was holding something back this entire time, so they unleashed their attacks with renewed vigor. Both men are severely injured from the brutality of the fighting by now. However, Wesser lost his divinity, his weapon, and with them, the game gracefully disappearing from the field of honor. On the other hand, Ratten was trying to keep her composure after witnessing Asuka controlling Dean, ordering Sturm demons to crush Asuka. However, they were no match for Dean, who was one-shotting them with a single blow, dodging all of their attacks successfully. In desperation, Ratten tries to sneak behind Asuka to eliminate her, but Dean manages to turn and capture her before she can inflict any harm upon his new master. Instead of getting rid of her, Asuka decides to challenge Ratten to a game, where she has to use her song to seduce Dean, to which Ratten happily obliges. At first, Asuka started enjoying the melody, but remembering the struggle she had with her friends, she strengthened her resolve and kept control over Dean. And with that, Ratten has been defeated, disappearing into oblivion. Things were not going that well for Sandra and Black Rabbit, however, as they kept on struggling against Perchur. Black Rabbit realized that her opponent was a ghost since her spiritual power is not derived from the 130 deaths in Hamelin but from the 80 million losses during the outbreak of the Black Death. Perchur confirms it, stating that she aims to punish the instigator of the Black Plague, namely the sun, represented by Shiroyasha. Just as she finished spouting her aims, Perchur noticed the disappearance of her teammates, realizing that it was only a matter of time before Asuka and Sakamaki came to take her down too. So instead of buying time, she decided to eliminate everyone instantly. Once she cast her death spell, the town folk started running away in horror, some of the guards dying heroically as they were hiding civilians from danger. Sandra was enraged by what she saw, however, she couldn't move as a lonely boy was trying to run for his life, as I couldn't help myself as I was singing run boy run for the boy because death was trying to catch him. Unfortunately, he fell on the ground. Black Rabbit couldn't make it in time anyway, so Kasuke managed to reach out to him but failed to lift herself since she was unwell, and then everyone died and Perchur emerged victorious. The end. Let me stop playing, for Dean managed to come in at the last second, 
buying enough time for Kasukabe to rescue the boy. It was around the same time that Sakamaki arrived also, saving Black Rabbit from a sneak attack of Prature, counter-attacking his opponent in the process. Now that the stage is set, Sakamaki follows through the plan that Black Rabbit told him and starts by attacking Prature, followed up by consecutive attacks of Sandra and Black Rabbit, aiming to distract her for as long as possible. For a while, things were not looking too hot, as Prature managed to keep the three of them in check. To make matters worse, she begins casting a gigantic spell to eliminate everyone in the realm at once, until Black Rabbit finally changes the realm where the battle is taking place to Chandra Mahal on the moon, nullifying Prachur's spells completely. Frustrated, Prachur tries to attack with whatever she still can throw at them, but after pulling the sun's armor, all of her efforts are futile. After getting her in position, Sakamaki and Black Rabbit give the signal to Asuka to deal the finishing blow on Prachur using the gift card that Black Rabbit gave her earlier, sealing Prachur's fate once and for all. Peace was finally achieved in the district, followed by a public apology from Shirayasha for getting everyone involved in this huge mess, leaving the victory declaration for Sandra to say. Once her mission is done, Asuka gets back to Dean's hideout, thanking him and Rattenfinger for their help, listening to their story for one last time, and leaving her with Marin after bestowing upon her the gift of agriculture. Mandra, in his office couldn't help but be impressed with Thousand Eyes' contribution to the event, only for Sakamaki to rush in from the room's ceiling. Sakamaki revealed that Mandra was the traitor who invited the demon lord into the district, making it clear that it was because of his recklessness that many of his comrades were injured. Mandra didn't sit idle of course, explaining that he did all of that because it was important to protect the community's flag, and that all those that have died did so willingly, to which Sakamaki didn't bother arguing. Just before he leaves the room, however, he manages to strike an alliance with the Salamandra once again. In the nameless community territory, the entire community started having fun fertilizing their land, hoping that they would be able to grow pumpkins to celebrate their Halloween. Just as Sakamaki heads to help out Black Rabbit, a message falls from the skies, marking the end of this for now. As always if you enjoyed let me know down below and make sure you are subscribed. I'm out.